The Underground Railroad was a pathway used by runaway slaves to escape the shackles of slavery and pursue a life of freedom. Traditionally, the road headed north towards freedom, but a small portion of runaways instead turned south towards Florida. In 1693, the Spanish had abolished slavery in Florida, establishing a safe haven for runaway slaves. But life for the runaway slaves in Florida was not utopic either. The Seminoles were Native Americans that took their name from the Creek word meaning runaway or separatists. It would seem that the escaped slaves were not the only runaways in Florida. Prior to the Seminole Indian Wars, the Seminoles were spread across the entire state of Florida and even spoke variations of Muskegon. It wasn't until the war started that the desperate groups began to align themselves. The runaway slaves formed their own tribes adjacent to and sometimes with the Seminoles. Though some tribes treated escaped slaves as slaves, they were not as brutal and merciless as the white slave owners. The Seminoles generously allowed the ex-slaves to live freely as long as they shared their crop at the end of the season. They were called Black Seminoles, Black Indians, and Seminole Freedmen. The Black Seminoles adopted Seminole traditions and lifestyles. They eventually married into the tribes and their children were accepted by the tribes. With the help of the Seminoles, the former slaves learned how to live life as free men and were quite prosperous. But this did not sit well with the slave owners. They conspired with the government and convinced them it was time to rid the state of the natives that lived there in hopes of getting their slaves back. This caused three separate wars waged between two nations, referred to as the Seminole Indian Wars, that were exclusively fought in Florida. During these wars, the Black Seminoles were considered to be the fiercest and most courageous fighters the U.S. government had ever fought. Whole divisions of Black Seminoles fought off the invading soldiers who were being led by General Andrew Jackson. Following the First Seminole War and the seceding of Florida to the United States by Spain, the Seminoles were banished from northern Florida. The U.S. began building forts and other settlements in North Florida. The Second Seminole War began in the 1830s as a response to President Jackson's Indian Removal Act. The United States government aimed to banish the Seminoles from Florida entirely. The Seminoles made use of guerrilla warfare tactics, but General Thomas Jessup changed the course of the war through the treacherous capture of Seminole leaders while using signs of truce. By the end of the Second Seminole War, most of the Seminole population had died in battle or undergone relocation. What Seminoles were left were further brutalized in the Third Seminole War, which left merely 500 Seminoles in the state of Florida. Most of the Seminoles had been relocated to Oklahoma. Following relocation to Oklahoma, Seminoles were forced to live under Creek law. While the Seminoles were treated somewhat respectfully, the Black Seminoles were treated with disdain. Black Seminoles were often excluded from representation and reparations. The Seminole Nation restricted membership to those with ancestors on the Dow's Rolls, a registration that excluded over a thousand freedmen. Some Black Seminoles fled to Mexico where they formed a new tribe and were given the name Muscagos. In recent memory, the government finally acknowledged the claims of Black Seminoles and started awarding the much overdue benefits to those who descended from the tribes. While the Black Seminoles may not be as well known as their counterparts, their role in the history of Florida can still be felt to this day.